this thing recording boom hello 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 everyone from across the world and our precious vips we have a very very special guest we have bob from sologenic as well as fabio and the highly anticipated sologenic airdrop for this xrp community in my opinion one of the biggest airdrops we're ever going to receive bob Hello, my friend. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your project before we got started? As I'm very excited. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thanks for having us, Bearable and Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the opportunity here. <clears throat> and before I start, I would like to, you know, uh, clarify. You know, I have a little bit of cold, so in case if my voice is is a little bit sound weird, <laughs> I do apologize. Trust I me, try. No no worries man my voice sounds very weird everyone's used to it <laughs> <laughs> this is true <laughs> yes uh so what was the question you want oh to just to tell the audience a little bit about yourself and just the solo genic pro project just a brief overview and then we'll power through perfect yeah so my name is bob bob brass as uh, one of the co-founders of solo genic and Recently, we announced a new technology, a new uh, layer one blockchain, which is called Corio. It's been announced less than 24 hours ago. And uh, yeah, so I'm happy to be here today. I understand that perhaps community, they having a lot of questions and that's mm -hmm. exactly what the intention of this session is. Without a doubt. And thank you for being here and taking the time out. As I know you guys, you were talking earlier, you have plenty of developments happening in the background. You just launched this new technology yesterday and we will be getting um, right to that as plenty of the community has some questions um, that they want answered. But first things first, we have this massive airdrop for this um, for the XRP community and for Sologenic holders coming on the 24th. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to ask a couple questions that I've gotten from people just about that specifically. So first, the biggest concern with individuals is trust lines. Can mm -hmm. we trust them? Can we trust these trust lines and, and what goes into as far as the security? Can you just define that for some people that may have some reservations about it? Yeah. Uh... Trust lines are actually a feature. It's one of the cool features on, on the XRP ledger. So the way that trust line, trust lines are safe, super safe. So the way that trust line works, you basically uh, allow the other, the issuer, you know, the, the issuer address or the gateway. Uh, you send a request to the issuer gateway and the issuer gateway allows you to hold and trade that specific IOU, which is, you know, in the other word, it's called uh, XRPL tokens, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's exactly what it is. And it is safe. There is no safety issue with that. It's, yeah. it's a feature of XRP Ledger, and mm -hmm. it's been around uh, forever. Excellent. Thank you. Now, for everyone in the audience, he just said the trust lines are safe, so you can feel confident that you're not going to have something bad happen if you do set up your solo trust line. That's the first concern of um, that everyone was curious about. Now, we in the XRP community saw an initial ratio as far as the distribution of tokens as 0.2 solo for XRP. Recently, you have made an announcement that it's closer to like 0.01 solo for XRP, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what do you expect the final distribution kind of to look like, just roughly? Yes, uh, that's a great question. We haven't ran any new snapshot tests at this moment, mm -hmm. but uh, since the last time that uh, you know we we did a snapshot, I think our more XRP are going to be claimed. You know, frankly, because mm -hmm. right now there are a huge, you know, uh, a few bigger exchanges like Binance are going to participate. There are actually uh, many other exchanges that they have contacted us and perhaps we're just going to announce all these exchanges one after each other today. They are a lot of exchanges. Mm -hmm. uh, the ratio is, gonna, is going to change. Mm -hmm. definitely. Yes. But with what happened with Sologenic yesterday, so, so I assume that mm -hmm. the ratio yes. is going to be changed for Sologenic as well, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. As as all of us, we know they they has been some sort of 
uh, sell off yesterday, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we haven't really ran a new snapshot, but yeah. uh, perhaps we are going to do that. Uh, maybe if we get a chance, we, you know, the team is super, super busy at this moment, but if we get a chance, perhaps uh, we can, you know, run a new test uh, today and let the community know. Excellent, excellent. Now, something that I'm curious to know about is um, when it comes to that, um, the Sologenic platform, mm -hmm. can we do direct crypto to stock or ETF or commodity trades on this platform in the future? Because when I first got, when I, I first got directed to your project, I thought, mm -hmm. damn, that's, that's a monstrosity of a use case. Can you explain a little more to people that may be wondering what exactly Solo yeah. is? Yeah, so if you go to solarjank.com, the test net is actually live. It's been around for more than a year, I would say. Mm -hmm. And if you just, yeah, I can see that you are doing it right now. So if you just click on tokenized assets right there, yes, you just create an account. You don't have, this. basically it's a test net, right? So you just put an email address and, and a password. There is no KYC at this moment because it's a test net. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen, the system will give you some practice uh, funds, which there are uh, Bitcoin, XRP, and uh, US dollars. So the Bitcoin and, but the Bitcoin and uh, XRP, they are, they are issued on the test. Net. So these are not real. So don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just uh, trade them. You can actually convert them. Uh, with the stock. So at this moment, the system is, is connected, is receiving the data from NASDAQ and NYSC. This is a live data. Okay. So the prices, for example, for any stocks that you are searching, you get the, the real price, you know, the live price, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then you can actually convert your uh, holdings, let's say XRP, directly to, let's say, Tesla, Mm -hmm. and the test it and and then you can uh, go through the tokenization process the system will show you all the steps one by one and mm -hmm. the tokenized stock is actually are being issued on the xrp ledger tested mm -hmm. right and are yeah. traceable so the system will provide you with the link with the transaction link which you can actually verify that we can see that you literally tokenize your very first stock on the xrp ledger test net wow so, so we're just waiting, we're just waiting uh, for, for the license, broker-dealer license. I'm sure mm -hmm. that's, that's perhaps one of your questions, which I'm happy to elaborate yes. a little bit more on that further. Please, and can, can you go into that just a little more? And also, yeah. um, along those lines, can you also uh, state what institutions you expect to come on board in the future? And are there any that you can mention now? I might be poking around a little too much, Bob, but this is what I do. <laughs> I like that. You do your job. Uh, in terms of in terms of the uh, broker deal, dealer license, <clears throat> uh, we applied. You know, we submitted our application to FSA, which is in in European Union, twice. Yes. They, okay. The first time that they send them. They had some, obviously, some uh, objections, right? And they asked us, you know, if we can overcome those objections, which, you know, we, we hired some uh, risk officers, uh, sorry, chief risk officers. We hired uh, some other financial uh, experts, right? Just to mm -hmm. put together a new proposal somehow that, you know, these uh, regulators, they can understand it, right? So mm -hmm. we submitted a second application. So second application, they, they were happy, you know, they're happy with everything. Uh, the only thing that they, they're having a hard time to understand is they do not understand how a decentralized exchange, how XRPL DEX is going to work out. They're having a hard time to understand that there is no party behind it. And they keep mm -hmm. asking this question that, oh, you, you need to put regulation on, on the DEX. And then our answer is how? How do you want us to put regulations on the DEX? Mm -hmm. And they're saying someone should be able to do it. Say no, it's a DEX. So that's that's <laughs> yeah, that's the issue. So yes. so it's kind of 
for me, this is an issue that XRP is kind of going through. It's like a chicken and egg scenario. It's like the technology wants to, to launch, but then we need regulation to have the technology launch. But then institutions and projects, they want to be compliant, but then the regulators don't know how the hell to make things compliant. So it's like, what the hell is going on, right? So it's, it's very frustrating, I can imagine. So, so this is how we are going to tackle this, right? <clears throat> We want to launch this. There's no way that we don't launch. We want to launch it, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. And because that's the whole use case. This is this is the most use case of uh, Sologenic, right? And we are going to launch that. So the way that we are going to tackle this perhaps is, uh, we, we have two options. Option number one is we, we go and acquire a broker dealer in one of the jurisdiction outside of Europe or US, mm -hmm. right? Interesting. And launch the project, you know, in a pilot, as a pilot in some countries outside of Europe and US, right? And obviously Canada as well. Yes. Let it, let it, you know, be around for a few months or I don't know, a year. So, and then we go back to these regulators again and say, hey, this, been a, this has been around, this has been already launched as a pilot in these jurisdictions, right? Yes. And and look, look, everything is going fine. You know, no, nobody is going to abuse the system. You, you know what I mean? Just giving an example of working a real uh, working product, not a test net, because on the test net, you know, they're not uh, really convinced with the te test net, right? They will, so I think this is one way. This is, this is an idea that we have. And uh, yeah, and, and basically that, that's going to be the plan. But at the same time, we are looking at the uh, few other options. For example, we've been in touch with a few companies inside US mm -hmm. that those companies are third party, third party owned. So yes. maybe we can just launch a service inside US with mm -hmm. a third party. So third party will be in charge of the customer onboarding that that investment firm is going to be in charge of the custody of uh, customers assets right and we don't touch it right and they do, and we just take care of the technology so this is another option but mm -hmm. uh, end of a story is going to happen and since i brought up you know this topic i would like to clarify uh, some points there are mm -hmm. actually two different teams are working on sologenic yeah so one team is uh, sologenic org with sologenic org is the main team they are in charge of the Sologenic ecosystem. These are, uh, you know, a, a team of developers, open source developers that they have been building, you know, on, on the XRP ledger and other blockchain. So this is a team that they have created. So the whole Sologenic ecosystem, this is the team that they have uh, main, maintaining, you know, the whole Sologenic ecosystem. And then mm -hmm. we have, and we have Sologenic.com. With Sologenic.com is just a use case of Sologenic technology, right? Mm -hmm. So in, yeah. in another word, it's like uh, Ripple created a use case for XRP. So Ripple is, is a certain, basically is, is a company, XRP mm -hmm. and XRP Ledger is a network, right? So this yeah. is exactly the same way. And even when we go live with Sologenic.com services, I'm not going to be part of that. I'm not going to be running that business. I'm not going to be, you know, be executive or, or on the board, right? I just don't like it. I just want to focus on technology, have my own freedom and build cool, you know, stuff. <laughs> understood, understood. And and before we continue on um anything else, I, I want to point out to the audience that with me, I love utility coins. Um, you yourself, you're describing how you're looking to be compliant. You're looking to have a use case with the ecosystem. You have your your minimum viable product already. Like we have this test net ready to go. We can see the price feeds from the NASDAQ and the stock exchange already. So it's something that's here. It's looking, it has things available already and it's looking to sustain itself into the future. And these are important criteria that I looked um, for for investing in, in tokens just just in general. But we fortunately we got plenty of these tokens for free. Right. Now we're gonna get into something very quickly, Bob, that I know that we talked about a little earlier that um 
<laughs> we're a little frustrated about. Now, I'm going to get into one question and then lead it into the next one. So us XRP holders, we've been fortunate enough to, on top of XRP, have numerous airdrops, and it's essentially free money from the heavens for final, for holding XRP. We've seen XRP suppressed for years, and now we finally got some, some profits in the form of free tokens. First, yeah. it was first it was Songbird, right? Songbird was the first big airdrop that we were able to receive. And there was a snapshot on top of Songbird um, a little over a week ago. Unfortunately, the price of Songbird tanked right after. I don't understand why, because I really like that project. It's going to do very well. But people sold it off. Now, yesterday, unfortunately, the price of Solo tanked after you made a massive announcement i still don't understand why um i'm gonna i'm gonna get into that in one second but as far as the price history of sologenic is concerned i've seen some explosive things happening with this project um recently solo's price came rose from the ashes from six cents all the way up to like six dollars well what was going on behind the scenes that caused that um monstrosity of a move to happen just out of curiosity i've been i've been very transparent with the community i actually tweeted about that right i still gonna say the same thing mm -hmm. first of all when it it was dumped to six cents we were not behind that mm -hmm. okay I'll be, this is the official statement. You can take it, take me to the court if you want. We <laughs> have not sold or dumped any solo tokens, you know, when it got mm -hmm. dumped to six cents, right? Absolutely not. The reason that they got, you know, it, the price went down, we were actually monitoring it. So when, when uh, we, we had an exchange, Coinfield, right? So that exchange, obviously, on, on, on the balance sheet of that, that exchange, there was, uh, some significant amount of uh, solo tokens, right? Because the exchange that was, uh, you know, our own exchange and it was in charge of, you know, uh, it, it gave us some support, you know, creating uh, with, with the development, with the marketing, with, with many different aspects, right? But mm -hmm. those tokens, it was on their balance sheet. And when that company was acquired, we couldn't just mm -hmm. take it off the balance sheet, right? So we mm -hmm. had to, you know, the, that company was acquired with the assets, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, the new ownership group, unfortunately, they decided to dump, you know, to dump mm. solo because they were trying to launch their own exchange token, which is understandable. I have no problem with that, right? Mm. And it's, it was their own decision, but they, they dump it. But it wasn't, I think it, was a, it wasn't really a wise decision, mm -hmm. right? They could at least, you know, sell it eventually, not to hurt the market and not yeah. to hurt their own <laughs> holdings, right? So literally they were dumping, you know, a big amount of solo, about 21 million units of solo at, yeah. at some numbers around five, six cents. But mm -hmm. the way that I look at it is, it was actually a great test, right? Mm -hmm. We got back up. It means yeah. that people are supporting the project, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And it was actually a great stress test. And uh, yeah, so that's exactly what happened. And fortunately for everyone, it went up 100x in four weeks. So <laughs> I know you guys are happy. That was powerful. That was literally a very powerful thing. I'm like, damn, I wish I would have gotten in at six cents. I was lucky enough to get in at 40, but but that six cents was powerful without a doubt. But um, it along those lines, let's talk a little bit more about price because the price has kind of been a reflection of some news that broke um, yesterday. So yesterday, unfortunately, we saw the price tank about like 35% on the news of you were, you would, you uh, announced new technology that was being built um, on top or solo or to help um, a company yeah. solo genic Corium. Can you yeah. go into that and um, kind of, kind of let the audience know um you know, there has been some misinformation discussed I, about this. Thank, thanks, I, for, I, thanks for the opportunity. I, I couldn't wait further to talk about this, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I know, I know it was frustrating for you because to me, this looks like an opportunity for the solo token to maintain its value, right? So please clear this yeah. up. 
see, first of all, if the, we don't want to get involved in the price fluctuations, right? Of let's course, let's of put, course. put that aside. But we are involved in the project. We are involved in what the community, you know, how the community is, is treating us and the, mm -hmm. you know, and the whole ecosystem, right? Yes. So we have announced a hell of a technology, mm -hmm. which technically it's resolving all the, the weaknesses, problems, you know, of the current blockchains available, existing blockchains, right? I don't want to say the existing blockchains are bad or good, mm -hmm. right? But this is technology. Every year, the technology is moving forward, right? So if you're mm -hmm. not with, the, if you don't go with the flow, you, you, you are going to, you know, stay behind. That's how everything works, right? And it's actually a great thing, you know, to, to go with the flow. It's actually, you know, it's, it's acceptable, you know, to improve uh, your, your ecosystem and, you know, and, and provide better technology to, to the community members. So mm -hmm. Corium ecosystem blockchain, it's a layer one smart blockchain with, with super low transaction fee and super fast uh, speed, right? Mm -hmm. And this technology we have been working on for, you know, over a year right now. Yes. And we announced it. But unfortunately, we got like a lot of confusion and we got mixed uh, emotions, you know, and vibes and reactions from the community members. There have been a lot of confusion. Like uh, some of some of actually some of the reaction that I've seen. Are you guys going to ditch solo? No, we're not going to ditch solo. <laughs> the only reason, the only reason that we have created Corium. If, if you guys go and spend a little bit of time, read the blueprints, read the document, they, there is a 25, 30 pages document, just go through it, read, read, read it over, right? And one second, Jordan, can you just bring that up on the screen so people can get a visual? Uh, go ahead, Bob, go ahead. Yeah, so you can see that we actually put some features there. We have, we have designed some specific features for tokenizing securities, which, mm -hmm. which that's what Sologenic is doing right now, right? So that means that uh, instead of, okay, right now we had a few options. The option number one was, okay, we get, if you wanna launch some DeFi, you know, products, you know, for solo and, and tokenized asset in the future, we had to go adopt, you know, and in do integration with some third party solutions, with, which in that case, it would just limit the whole ecosystem, right? When you are using third party solution, you get limit, right? There's no question about that. So instead of doing that, we decided to, to create a layer one blockchain, mm -hmm. which actually is designed for Sologenic ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's for the sake of uh, Sologenic to be successful and launch more DeFi products. Like, mm -hmm. you know, once we get the license, once we launch tokenized stocks, we're gonna be launching a lot of DeFi products for the tokenized stocks. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Which it's too early to talk about it. So, and the other questions: Oh, are you guys gonna go away from XRP Ledger? Everything, whatever we have built, it was built on the XRP ledger. So XRP yeah. ledger is going to be our forever home. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be moving, you know, moving away from XRP ledger. Mm -hmm. the, the, the DeFi, the DeFi aspects of Sologenic is obviously is going to be uh, moved and offered on Corium network because um, XRP ledger at this point, it doesn't support the smart contract functionality, which is very important, you know, for DeFi when it comes to DeFi, right? Yeah. So, but all the components, all the services of Sologen is going to stay on XRP ledger. We, we have a DEX right now. We are launching our NFT marketplace on XRP ledger. Literally that NFT marketplace is being completed. We just, in, we are in the testing period right now. Mm -hmm. And we may just go live any day. You know, we said we're gonna have a surprise launch. We, we're gonna launch it. We are, we're still gonna do a surprise launch. So all of this have been built on the XRP ledger. So no, we're not, we, <laughs> we're not ditching solo tokens. We're not moving away from XRP ledger, right? You know, I think that there are two types of, sorry if I speak it, you know, so much, but. <laughs> no worries, no worries. That's what you're here for. <laughs> yeah. 
But there are two type of because I got super super disappointed. Not only myself, the whole team here. We spent a lot of time on this project. It wasn't really fair, you know, to come up with all those tweets and and create a lot of confusion, you know, for and the here's, here, here here's what I'll say about that, Bob. Something that you'll learn about my channel very quickly is that most of my audience is very rational minded and grounded when it comes to these things because when unfortunately what happens is that on Twitter people degenerate in the comment comment section it's usually a lot of people um, that probably don't even have too much invested in on the line here um, by the way we're getting sologenic for free guys I don't know if you knew that but, but it's it's usually a lot of people that are you know they don't read the documents and the articles and the paperwork immediately when I, I saw what you guys were doing, I'm like, okay, they're created another token to help with the speed and the longevity of the sologenic yeah. ecosystem. And it's clearly, uh, they never said they're moving away from XRP. So when I, I saw all the hoopla and then the, the price action, I was really shocked because what it's doing, it's incentivizing us to hold solo because the way you, this is an airdrop on top of sologenic, correct? And it's a prolonged airdrop. So we continuously over, I believe it's over a couple months, we got these tokens um, received to us, right? If I, I will explain that. Yes, I will definitely explain it. Uh, yeah. But quite frankly, uh, you know, that this is how exactly happened. Whatever mm -hmm. you see that happened to the to the market is be exactly because of what, what happened. We have done our own due diligence on that, right? There, yeah. there were two reasons. Three reasons and, Reasons number one, some people created confusion without even doing some research on the new Corium technology. So it was whatever they tweeted, it was mm -hmm. just assumption, yes. right? And unfortunately, the average Joe whatever, believes whatever he sees, right? Yes, yes. So he doesn't do research mm -hmm. either, right? And a panic was created. People, they were saying, oh, so they're ditching solo. Solo is done. Solo is done. Come on. Like, like, <laughs> why? <laughs> I understand. So but, this is, but this is why today's interview is important because we get to clear up that misinformation. And we have the CEO here, guys, clearing it up for all of you. And, and something you. I have to say is that Solo is an important project for the XRP ecosystem as a whole. Like I'm looking, like of course we're getting some tokens for free, and that's great. And people probably want to take some profits, if, but I'm looking to hold this into the future because I think you guys have something powerful going on here. Thank you. No, yeah, I appreciate it. If if there is no solo, there is no Corium, right? So Corium is built is be, is being built by mm -hmm. the Sologenic team. So yes. You know, Corium is a community-based project. Quite frankly, just I make it very, very quick. So we could just launch. This is actually what happened with our team members. We actually thought about this today and last night. We say, you know what? Right now that they, they be having such a bad vibe from from some solo holders and XRP holders, right? Mm -hmm. How about we just cancel the Corium airdrop? You know, because we can we can easily you know separate corium from sologenic ladies and gentlemen this is the bull saving everyone's <laughs> airdrop right now bob i think after this interview um people um they'll they'll get their facts correct and i still think the airdrop should still happen um tell your team at home that that el toro loco is clearing everything up i am clearing everything up now because i want my corium token <laughs> you know people they need to understand that corium is is a fast layer one modern uh yes. block, you know, layer one blockchain right yes i yes. don't want to give you you know don't this is not a financial advice. This is not, you know, I'm not trying to shield the token because first yeah. of all, there's no token sale, right? We, yes, we, yes. we wanted to keep this as uh, organic, you know, without any commercial aspect, you know, attached to it, right? So it's a hundred percent community based. The 70% of the Torah supply is going to either be airdrop to the community or mm -hmm. they're going to be used for the validator incentives or developers, whoever comes and build you know, DeFi apps on, on Corium, they get paid, they, they get grants, right? So we are giving away 70%. The other 30% is, 
it's going to stay, you know, within within the foundation and covering teams. Obviously, yeah. we have we have developers and maintaining the network, uh, and we. So so far, you know, Sologenic has funded uh, Corium Foundation to launch this project, right? Like yes. in, in terms of the the injection of the uh, you know funding, you know, the Sologenic has done that. But maybe because we don't have a token sale, maybe I don't know. A few months from now, we we feel that okay, Corium needs to raise some funds, right? In that mm -hmm. case, we only sell a portion of that thirty percent to the accredited investors, not to the retail or or you know. Uh, public to the, only to the accredited investors. That means that to uh, investment firms, uh, VCs, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, for for those guys, they're going to be a vesting period implemented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no. but end of the day, end of the day, if you have XRP, you get solo tokens, airdrop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you have if you have solo, you get Corio, right? Yes. Very so, nice. <laughs> without a doubt, and what, what's wrong with that? Why you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely nothing, Bob. And I'm making sure you you know this after this video does get posted. Um, I think you're gonna see a complete 180 degree shift in the sentiment. As Twitter, I've learned, isn't the best medium of exchange for information because it, it's limited characters. So that's what I'll say. We're clearing things up as we speak. Please don't cancel the airdrop because I am bullish. <laughs> We won't. You uh, don't want to do it. But I just wanted to let you know how frustrated. I can imagine because you guys are the team and the people literally working night and day to make sure this this vision becomes a reality. So I can only imagine, guys. But um, what I'll say is um as well, I I kind of saw how the um the distribution of the airdrop is going to uh, be mm -hmm. done. Jordan, can you bring that up on the screen? And and Bob, can you explain it a little bit just to show how? Um, you're trying to maintain the value of the solo token, right, through this airdrop. And also, I'm curious to know as well, I know this is a two-part question, but what um, do you express, expect us, the retail holder and the ecosystem for Sologenic, what do you expect us to contribute as far as the utility of the tokens are concerned? You know, thanks for that question. Uh, you know the the sologenic airdrop the snap there is only one snapshot and there is only one distribution right the mm -hmm. snapshot is going to happen on december 24th at 8 p.m utc time right mm -hmm. and in terms of corium there there are 13 snapshots the very first snapshot is actually it could be actually on the same day as a snapshot mm -hmm. of solo right we don't tell, we just take a random snapshot. The first one is in the period of 24th of December to 31st of December, 2021, which is like in few days. That's for the Corium, right? And the second snapshot for Corium is going to be random time, sometimes in January, 2022. The first is distribution for uh, Corium is, mm -hmm. is going to be done as a, a IOU on an XRP ledger and it's going to happen in February in February 2022. Uh, however, the distribution for solo is going to happen in January uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. And sorry if I do a lot of back and forth, back and forth I hope <laughs> people they don't get confused. But Perfect. yes, there you go. That's that's basically the, the table I was looking for. So you can see, you know, on right down the screen, you can see all the snapshots. There are 13 snapshots, right? And we just give you a period, a period of time when they're going to be uh, taken, right? The first one is December 24th to 31st, 2021. And after that, you are going to take a random snapshot on a monthly basis for a whole year, right? And in terms of the distribution, February 2022 is the first one. February 22 basically is 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 the first one for for the snapshot one and two together, mm -hmm. and right after that it's going to be a monthly distribution for uh, Corium to solo holders. Mm. And uh, obviously, you know, the market is going to be open, you know, right away in February on the XRP ledger on Sologenic Dex, and mm -hmm. uh, since this is a community based project. You know, I, I assume that many larger exchanges that they, they would like to list it uh, because there is no absolutely there is no token sale or ICO involved in this, and we want to keep this you know keep this as a hundred percent community based 
And we don't want to look at this as a business. You know, we want to create this technology and let everyone, let people to run it. You know, we want developers to join and decide about the future of this technology. Very nice. Now, a point that that's you made was very important, and I'm briefly going to gloss over it just so people kind of understand. Um, with me, what I understand about all these airdrops and this mm -hmm. um, XRP ecosystem is that it is a very intelligent way that that um, developers and teams have found to kind of be compliant with regulations. Am I correct? Because we saw we see what's going on with XRP and the SEC right now. We see mm -hmm. plenty of other tokens. They probably launched ICOs. They might be security, may not. I, I view airdrops as teams need to be able to be in compliance and have a massive ecosystem to get started with, right? So I think mm -hmm. airdrops, the distribution of these tokens are a way for you to get, um, well, not around, but get around the regulations and also be compliant and have the ecosystem to start with. Is that kind of why this is happening with the XRP ledger specifically? Yeah. Um, you know, and there's something else if you just allow me to discuss that very quickly. Uh, I've seen some comments, you know, on, on Twitter that, oh, Sologenic dump. 86 million solo yesterday. Mm -hmm. So quickly, I just covered that. Uh, and they, they yeah, keep yeah. sending a snapshot, uh, sorry, a screenshot from, uh, I think it's, it's called Lifecoin Watch that is showing the, the circulating supply of solo as uh, 286 million or 287 million units currently, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has been around for a long time. You know, that discrepancy on, on that specific website has been yeah. around for a long time. If you want to see the, the correct, the most accurate circulating supply, check coin market cap. They, we, we give them, you know, we, we actually designed a specific API for coin market cap so they can mm -hmm. record the exact number of circulating supply, right? And, and think, of, think about the other side. There's only 200. 200 million solo circulating in, in, in the whole ecosystem right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so if yesterday we sold 86 million solo, how the hell are, sorry, my language. <laughs> no, <laughs> trust me, I'm worse. <laughs> how are we going to cover the, the 200 million solo airdrop? Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Like, the total supply is 400 million, mm -hmm. right? How are we going to cover the 200 million solo distribution if, mm -hmm. if we have sold 86 million solo yesterday? So these are just rumors. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Excellent. Now, here's something um, I did want to get into as well, just a little bit. Um, I saw in your roadmap while I was looking over your site that you have um, solo genic debit cards on the way. Yes. Um, what benefits can we expect from them? Is there going to be kind of like a tier system as far as like maybe there's like a silver or a gold level as far as um, how many solo you get? What can we expect from that? And also what jurisdictions will allow these cards to exist? Because I know there's a lot of restrictions when you go to different countries and things like that. Yeah. You know, in terms of solo cards, actually the, uh, the API... Mm -hmm. And the app, you know, and and the, the even the web app, they have been completed, you know, uh, a few months ago, and they're ready to go. They, they 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 have been tested, and we're just ready to launch it. The only reason that we have not launched uh, solo cards yet, because originally when when we used to own, you know, that exchange Coinfield, we wanted yeah. to launch this on the Coinfield uh, company because in exchange because in order to process you know in order to do the conversion between fiat to cryptocurrency you need to work with with an exchange with an exchange api right that means that you have to work with an with a partner exchange in order to do the conversion the real-time conversion you know for for your users uh, mm -hmm. right now that you know that company was acquired and we are actually going to partner up with with the legit exchange you know tier one exchange mm -hmm. And, and most likely, uh, we're going to be working with there are a few exchanges that they already offer the service, they already have the cards. So perhaps we are going to do some collaboration with them. 
uh, but because from one side we really don't want to get involved in in custody of assets you know in in we don't want to get involved in that aspect right yeah, so yeah. but we are still we want to offer this the service the solo card service to our uh, community right this is going to happen but most likely we're going to be we're going to be doing some sort of collaboration you know with with uh, tier one exchange next year in 2022 in order to launch it very nice very nice that's important thank you so much for that and now i kind of want to follow that question up with this monstrosity of a question um yeah. you guys have announced an nft marketplace um yeah. we're all bullish on nfts um and I'm especially bullish on the ones being built within the XRP ecosystem. We've seen mm -hmm. the mania behind um, things like the board apes on Ether, but these gas fees are a serious problem. I remember seeing a $100,000 Tether transaction cost $23 million. That's nonsense. Hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what I'm curious to know is how Sologenic is looking to solve this problem. Um, what insights can you give us about um, this marketplace? And then I have one more question after um, you go yeah, about explaining it. Yep. You know, the, the beauty of SolarJank NFT marketplace is that it has been built on top of the XRP ledger. XRP ledger is, is offering super fast and super cost efficient transactions, right? So that means that if all the transaction on Sologenic uh, NFT marketplace are going to be the same transaction cost as the current XRP ledger fees, right? Uh, there, there are only one additional cost attached to it, which is minimal. In order to mint any N NFT, you need to bear a specific amount of solo. We, we had a, a poll, we had a voting on, on Twitter, so the community, they decided to keep that burning fee between one to five solos, right? We mm. haven't really put that, but we, our idea is to make this as cost efficient as possible. So we mm. get more user engagement. We want more artists, more creators to come on Sologenic NFT marketplace and create as many uh, you know, NFTs as possible, right? We don't want to make it too expensive for them. So, so mm -hmm. they, can, they, they cannot use the system uh, the way that they would like. Mm -hmm. And now when it comes to the marketplace, will, do you envision XRP specific NFTs being sold on there, right? Yes. Or, or will there also be the opportunity for other ecosystems NFTs to be sold on there? Or does that so, not exist yet? Uh, so actually we are, so from one side, we have an XRP NFT creators are ready, right? That they are creating their own NFTs and they're actually selling it, you know, on the current solo, Sologenic decks, you know, in, in yeah. other ways, right? Uh, so those group of creators, NFT, they're going to be using the system. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, uh, we are promoting this. We are going to promoting this, you know, to other community members, right? So, uh, you know, other other creators from Ethereum network, for example, they they uh, understand that they can save a lot, you know, by by minting on Sologenic and XRP Ledger uh, NFT marketplace. So definitely, we are going to do that. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, the team here. Uh, we usually receive, I don't know, a lot of emails on a daily basis from, from different creators and uh, artists that they would like to part, you know, participate. And they are asking, hey, when the NFT marketplace is going to be live, right? Which is very cool. And uh, I think I think it's going to be, uh, you know, very, <clears throat> sorry, it's going to be uh, a, a great launch. And mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's, you know, the network is going to get bigger <laughs> than what it is today. Without a doubt. I love hearing that. Now, <laughs> I'm going to ask you a personal question, Bob, because I'm curious. Um, right. what, what XRP NFTs are you looking at as having excellent potential in the future? Um, I'd be very frank with you. <clears throat> I haven't really had a lot of time to, to look into the, you know, specific creators or, or mm -hmm. artists on, on the XRP network, but I'm a big fan of uh, arts, right? You know, if you, 
uh, come, yeah, right now we are in our uh, North American office. You see behind me, <laughs> I love arts, right? Yes, yes. If you go around the office, you see a lot of arts everywhere, right? And uh, I have a few artists that they, they share their NFTs and mm -hmm. I'm probably going to buy, you know, one of those NFTs as soon as the system is launched. But we do have a lot of great uh, NFT creators on the XRP ledger, mm -hmm. and uh, which I think they, they're going to uh, take the most benefit from the Sologenic NFT marketplace when it's launched. Yes, very nice, very nice. Now, something that I'm curious about is, is um, the longevity of this project. Now, we, mm -hmm. we discussed the utility of the token. The marketplace, the debit cards, you're looking to be compliant and things like that. Me, whenever I um, invest in a project or ecosystem, I ask myself, what can this do in two to five years? And most of my audience is curious to know this as well. Um, what I want to know is what is the long term expectation of what you see Solo doing in the next two to five years and how they can navigate um, reaching projected goals with so much regulatory uncertainty? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think Sologenic is, is, is very creative, right? And mm -hmm. we, we move with the technology. We don't want to get a stock with, with the old rusted technology, right? So if we are, for example, right now we are doing tokenized assets, you know, we, then we move to NFT marketplace because that's, that's something that the community wants. It's a new technology. Right now we are long, you know, we just announced Corium blockchain, which is a super modern layer one blockchain, right? And I'm sure within the next few years, you're gonna be seeing a lot of new ideas and disruptions in the technology space that are going to be uh, supported and, and developed by Sologenic team. Uh, from my personal <laughs> side, I, I love metaverse, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually, Corium, you know, one of the features of the Corium blockchain is purely designed for metaverse. And so let's let's see what's going to happen. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe Sologenic use Corium blockchain and get into metaverse very soon. Hmm, very nice. Now, something I'm very curious to know about is you said you like the metaverse. Right. I'm beginning to truly dive as deep as possible into the metaverse as well. Um, do you see solo integrating with the metaverse in some way, shape or form? And for some people that may not really know what it is and what's coming, can you just explain what you foresee coming down the road? Yeah, obviously, metaverse is a very new <clears throat> uh, technology and, and concept. Right. And I think that it's it provide you know it provides limitless opportunities there are many ideas that they have not been implemented you know in metaverse world right now mm -hmm. and uh, as i said there is no limit right but mm -hmm. right now at this moment the team they haven't really uh, you know decided you know, on on our you know next move you know, into the metaverse mm -hmm. so i i cannot really answer that question but from my personal side, you know, I have a few ideas, very cool, that they're not really related to Sologenic or financials, right? But I just mm -hmm. love them, you know, because they, I think they're very cool when it comes to metaverse. For example, what if we just create some uh, global major university, like virtual university that we, you know, we, we allow some re remote countries to get better education, right? If you do that, a few years from now, let's say 10 years from now, we get, we actually increase the level of education global, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's going to help everyone. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the cool ideas I always thought about it. Or the other one is, what if you just, you can just go shopping, you know, you want to buy a car, you want to buy, I don't know, jewelry or a book, you just put it on, you know, on, on your eyes, you just go there, test drive the car, actually feel you know, the, the product that you want to buy, purchase, and then you just come back, you know, you just take it off and the product are being shipped to you, are being delivered to your door. Very, nice. very cool. Very nice. Now, something I'm very curious about as well is, um, will solo staking 
be a possibility this year. I may be poking a little too deep here, Bob, but let's see what happens. Um, will solo holders be able to stake their tokens um, while receiving the core airdrops as well, the Corium airdrops? Yeah, staking, you know, Coinfield, the previous exchange that we used to own, they, they used to offer solo staking and obviously it was a centralized state, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. decentralized or DeFi. And, and the reason that we couldn't launch a, you know, a decentralized staking program because XRP mm -hmm. Ledger does not support, you know, that, that feature does not support a smart contract. So right mm -hmm. now with, with the Corium being launched, uh, mm -hmm. definitely we are going to have staking. We are going to offer staking for solo. And as a matter of fact, you know, perhaps uh, everyone knows that Binance, uh, you know, we, we had a long discussion with Binance. And uh, they're going to, first of all, they're going to support the airdrop. You know, we have some other discussion with some collaboration that we want to be doing with them. So one of the cool collaboration that we haven't really announced it, but this, this is not a secret. So I just mentioned it here. So mm -hmm. they, we're going to do some collaboration with Binance. We're going to be taking some uh, solo genic, solo tokens on Binance smart chain very soon, maybe, you know, in, in, in January. So that brings... Uh, more opportunity for solo holders on Binance smart chain to take uh, you know advantage of. For example, you can do farming and you can do staking you know on Binance mm -hmm. chain right away. Without a doubt, without a doubt, very nice. And that's very important. A lot of people were curious about that. Um, Bob, I think this may very be the last question, and we'll call yeah. it a day. Um, is Sologenic going after tokenized assets and the stock markets around the world, or is it just specific to uh, certain jurisdictions? You know, in terms of offering uh, the portfolio from a specific exchanges, you know, we work with Saxo Bank, and Saxo mm -hmm. Bank is connected with 30 global stock exchanges, right? From pretty much from all over the world, right? And uh, so in terms of which jurisdiction we are going to offer the service, but uh, I think I, I covered that, but quickly, uh, right now we do a lot of back and forth with the you know, uh, uh, regulatory bodies in, in EU. Uh, the way that we are going to tackle this, most likely we are going to just acquire a company outside of EU, right? That's mm -hmm. option number one and offer a, a pilot uh, program. So we launch it, for example, for only Asian countries and Latin America. Because mm, we, okay. there is no, uh, there is no re re regulatory issue with that, and uh, then once the uh, you know regulators they feel more comfortable, they see the actual real product working, they see there is nothing wrong. Once they you know we get the license, we just offer it inside EU. So that's one way. The other way is we may want to partner up with a US broker dealer mm -hmm. inside the US, um, possibly in New York in East Side. Mm -hmm. and offer the service maybe in U.S. right off the bat. New York, that's big. If you can get it done in New York, that is the most uh, that is the most sustainable, incredible thing that could possibly be done. And um, 2022, you know, it's, it's going to be a super busy and exciting year for everyone. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, we see this year wrapping up and finally more momentum is going into the crypto space with regulation and more utility and all eyes are on this space nfts the metaverse etc and and to you and your team at sologenic guys i want to say thank you for all the developments that you guys have done um thank you for blessing this xrp community with these tokens and then another airdrop on top of our blessed airdrop already um <laughs> i hope this cleared up any confusion for anyone that may have um not understood what happened yesterday but in my personal opinion i'm i'm bullish on the project i'm looking to hold a good portion of my tokens into the future and um dude i want to talk to you into the future because i like what you guys are doing without a doubt i appreciate it and thank you very much for providing you know this opportunity i think it was a great timing and yes yes it was a pleasure talking with yourself and and also jordan and I hope that we can, you know, just have another session very soon, maybe in 2022. Without a doubt, Bob. And Fabio, thank no. you so much for being here as well. Um, I'm sure everyone Thanks in the you. audience.
and everyone in the audience, I'm sure everyone really appreciated it too. And um, we'll talk again soon, my brother. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks everyone. I appreciate it. Bye, Jordan. Keep coming.